We've always known Boris Johnson doesn't like scrutiny. More recently, Dominic Cummings revealed he is especially hostile to scrutiny from women. Both of those features of the Prime Minister were on show in an interview Boris Johnson gave at COP26 to CNN's Christiane Amanpour. Do you want to answer what's going around on social media? You brought up the national treasure, Sir David Attenborough. And there you all were in the plenary. He's 95 years old. He was wearing masks and you weren't. It's all over the place. Right. I, 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 you weren't wearing a mask yesterday, sitting next to 95-year-old national treasurer David Attenborough. Right. I've been, I've been, you know, wearing a mask when in confined spaces with people that I don't uh, normally meet, and I think it's up to people to take a judgment about whether they're, whether they're, you know, at a reasonable distance from uh, from someone, and uh, whether they're with someone they don't normally meet. That's what. That's what. That's the the approach we take. The way she twiddled. You know, her thumb as well. She was skewering Boris Johnson. It was really the, the height of camp. Um, also, just repeating it over and over again. 95-year-old national treasure David Attenborough, who you sat next to without any mask. You mean 95-year-old national treasure David Attenborough, who you sat, sat next to with no mask? Obviously, I mean, it is uh, talking about the substance of this, beyond the fact that, as I say, Boris Johnson really didn't like being scrutinized by a woman live on TV. It is... Kind of wild, isn't it? Sitting next to 95-year-old national treasurer David Attenborough without a mask on. Because the important thing here is David Attenborough was wearing a mask, right? So, so if David Attenborough hadn't been wearing a mask and it just seemed like, you know, there were four people there, none of them were that fussed. They all felt relatively secure. I, I, I've been to many a place where no one's wearing a mask, pubs, nightclubs, etc. I'm not saying no one should ever hang out close to someone without a mask on. But if you're next to someone who is more vulnerable than yourself, so... David Attenborough at 95 is more vulnerable than Boris Johnson. And they are wearing a mask. So they're clearly someone who is concerned about COVID-19. Then not wearing a mask yourself, you know, you might say it's reckless. More than that, I think it's just rude, right? It's, it's, it's really rude. <laughs> if, if you are next to someone who is particularly vulnerable to COVID-19, they're clearly making an effort. You could make the effort and you just decide not to. No, nope, I'm going to sit here without a mask on. I'm a creature of, um, I'm a social animal. So I often respond to, people around me. I, I wear a mask, you know, as on, on public transport where it's, where it's, um, you know, mandated. When I go to my corner shop, the people who work there don't wear masks. Most of the people going there don't wear masks. So often I forget to wear a mask. But w what I always do is if I'm surrounded by people wearing masks, and especially if I'm surrounded by people wearing masks who are more vulnerable than myself, I will put on a mask. It's just, it's just basic decency. And it is very much basic decency that Boris Johnson is just completely incapable of embodying. And, and he did not like it being pointed out there. Um, let's watch another clip from that interview. Again, you'll see Boris Johnson getting, getting really peeved at the nature of the questions. Can I move on to COVID? Because yes. there's a big spike in COVID in this country. And it's, you know, the record here is worse than it is elsewhere around Europe. Um, well, I dispute that. But, well, anyway, go on. but the facts and the figures show it. The, Again, it, I, I would okay, dispute that. Shall I, shall I read them? Uh, you can read whatever you like. But Well, first of all, let me, I mean, just let me ask you the question. Yeah. Um, you have said you're going to stick to plan A, which yeah. is no mandatory mask, keep the vaccines going, none of the social distancing or vaccine proofs that some of the other countries are doing. But the NHS Confederation and the British Medical Association have just come out and said plan B should be implemented now. In other words, masks when it's appropriate in crowded places, some sort of social distancing. And, um, and, and they're saying, you know, maybe even, maybe even vaccine proof. Why would you not? It's a very cheap and easy and people are used to, to masks. Why, why would you not do that? They say there'll be potentially yet another terrible pressure on the NHS this winter. Well, I, I'm, I'm uh, watching the data the whole time. We, uh, thank you. We're all, we're, all, we're all looking at the, the data. We've got to remain very cautious. We've got to remain um, humble in the face of, the, uh, of, the, of, of, of nature, what the disease can do. Uh, at the moment, we don't see any reason to deviate from the plan that we're on. My favorite part there was the thank you. Why did he say thank you? What was he, what was he saying thank you for? I don't, uh, another thing I liked about that clip was how often Boris Johnson looked to the side. So he was like, why is this woman asking me such difficult questions? I don't know who he was looking at, presumably some sort of advisor, but the advisor wasn't going to be able to tell him that numbers weren't worse in Europe than in Britain when it comes to COVID-19, because the numbers are a hell of a lot worse in, in Britain than they are in Europe. Sorry, I might've got that the wrong way around. So, 
she was right. The interviewer was right. I'm kind of, I'm kind of regret that she didn't get the chance to read out the numbers, the the case levels, the death levels that are in France, Spain, Germany, Portugal, Italy, compared to the UK, because they are much worse in the UK than in the rest of Western Europe. I mean, Boris Johnson could have been referring to some Eastern European countries where the deaths are higher. That's because they have quite poor vaccination rates at this point in time. And, you know, we know Boris Johnson does like to compare himself to those countries which are doing the worst, as opposed to those countries which are most similar to us in terms of income levels and in terms of vaccination rates. So again, a, a very good skewering from that CNN host. What it kind of made me think is it would be good if our political interviewers in this country were less good friends with politicians. Because, you know, if Laura Koonsberg was doing that interview, I just think she knows Boris Johnson too well to, to talk to him like that. So the fact that she has potentially never met Boris Johnson before, she was just looking at him like, you know, any other person. I, I think that made the interview so much more effective, which is why I mean, there is a strong argument to have a much thicker wall between, between politicians and interviewers, because when they're mates, you just don't get that same scrutiny. You don't get that level of uncomfortableness on the part of a politician who is being made to squeal. It's important for scrutiny. It's also just much better TV. So, so the bosses at the BBC, when you get your next political editor, make sure they are not friends with the Prime Minister. Mm -hmm.